Hi everyone, thanks for visiting my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Carol, the Thrifty Chic Housewife. If you enjoy the content that you find here, please consider subscribing, like and share my videos, and follow me on social media. I will leave all the links in the description box below. So today we are just gonna do a little channel chat and update. I've had some fun things going on in my kitchen. I've purchased a couple of new things. So um, I thought we would just have a little chat today. Next week I'll get back into the groove and share some more recipes and the normal content that you're used to finding here but I think that you guys have also enjoyed some of my channel chats and my updates too so that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna talk about the new stuff that I've had going on in my kitchen so we're gonna get started talking about canning some of the canning books um, for those of you who love canning many of you have contacted me and asked me about this canning book or that canning book and you wanted to know my thoughts on that so I just want to say up front that if you've been around my channel very long you know that I am a safety girl I talk about it all the time and then most of my recipes I always do a tested recipe if i do make any changes i know that they are changes that are safe for canning so i am not really an adventurous canner i am certainly not a rogue canner and i feel a great sense of responsibility since i'm sharing information with all of you especially those of you who are new um, i want to make sure that what i'm sharing with you is correct and accurate and safe so i'm a safety girl so I reviewed these cookbooks that you guys asked me about, or canning books, um, from that perspective. With that being said, at the end of the day, everyone can do what they want in the privacy of their own kitchen. If you want to be a rogue canner, that's fine. I'm not a rogue canner for the most part. I'm not even really an adventurous canner. Most, for most, the most part, I consider myself a safety girl, and I talk about that a lot. So. I'm going to give you my honest opinion on these canning books and you can take it with a grain of salt. I'm going to tell you the things that I like and the things that I don't like and at the end of the day it's up to you. And I'm not, I don't want anyone to misunderstand me if I, I will always be honest about my thoughts but that doesn't mean necessarily mean that you have to agree with me and I'm certainly not putting, trying to put anyone down. Writing recipes is takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and I know all these people put a great deal of time and effort into creating these books but I do have some reservations uh, about at least one of them so um, I'm not putting down the author by any stretch of the imagination I'm just not a rogue canner and I'm not an adventurous canner so I'm I'm reviewing them from a safety standpoint so we'll just say up front that what you decide to do in the privacy of your own kitchen is entirely up to you. So let's start with this one. <laughs> this is the one that gave me the most pause. This is called the Complete Guide to Pressure Canning. It is by Diane Devereaux, the Canning Diva. And I've seen many of her recipes posted on the internet. I'm not a fan of this book. I think she takes a lot of liberties. Um, one of one of the things that she does is she uses clear gel in many of the recipes that are in here. For those of you who are maybe new or not familiar with clear gel, clear gel is a modified cornstarch that has been approved for water bath canning. There are no tested recipes it hasn't been researched for pressure canning and she uses it a lot in pressure canning so I that gives me pause about the recipes in this book so even though clear gel has been approved for water bath or steam canning I don't think that that gives us the liberty to just start applying it to any and every recipe that we decide to use it in so I'm not a fan of it from that perspective. Um, I can't find all the research that I found about the safety of using clear gel in canning states that it's only been tested really in fruit pie fillings. It hasn't really even been tested beyond that, even for water bath and steam canning. Um, but I would still feel 
I wouldn't feel uncomfortable using it in other water bath or steam canning recipes, but I do not feel comfortable using it in pressure canning recipes, period. I cannot find any research that says that it's been tested for that purpose. And as a matter of fact, the research that I found clearly states that it has not been tested for pressure canning. So I don't like that she uses it in pressure canning. That gives me pause. The other thing that gives me pause about the recipes that she's used in this book, she's a huge fan of canning beans from a dried state. And if you've been around my channel very long, you know that I am not a fan of that, period. Um, I did a lot of research on that and I have a video about why it's not safe to do that. And it's something that the the experts and the people who test our recipes say clearly state not to do and I will leave a link up here and in the description box to that video explaining the research and why um, they don't recommend doing that and she does that in this book so any recipe that has dried beans in it she does suggest canning them without rehydrating them or pre-cooking them so that gives me pause so I'm not a huge fan of this book. I think if you are a seasoned canner and you're just looking for new recipes and you can sort through um, what's safe and what's not safe, I think that this would be an okay book to have. Um, she does have some good ideas for recipes. I don't think, I do not recommend this book for a new canner, period. I, I think it has some things in it that are highly questionable and I would not recommend it for a newbie. So this is a thumbs down. For me and like i said it's not to cut her down or anything she has made a lot of recipes and i'm sure she's a great person but i do not like her method of canning in my opinion she's a rogue canner and that's out of my comfort zone i don't like question marks when it comes to my food so <laughs> anyway that book i do not recommend especially for newbies so the next book that you guys asked me about is diy canning this book i'm going to give you a thumbs up on however there were a couple of things that did give me pause most of the recipes in here and they have a lot of unique and fun recipes i think there were a couple of recipes in here that gave me pause and i'm going to share them with you and I tell you why um one of them is for and i know i'm going to butcher this because it's an italian word <laughs> giardineria giardinera um, it's basically Italian vegetables. Um, it's pickled Italian vegetables. And the thing that gave me pause, I think it's a great recipe. It sounds really tasty. Um, but the thing that I don't like is they use a tablespoon of olive oil in their, the jars. And it is a water bath canning recipe, but they recommend spooning one tablespoon of olive oil into each jar and then adding your vegetables. And then the other recipe is artichoke hearts in oil, and they are, water, again, water bath canning them. And in the margin, they say, did you know, you may have heard that processing foods with oil in a hot water bath is not safe. That would be true if it was just oil, but this recipe includes a healthy dose of acid, and that makes it safe for processing. My reservation about these two recipes is the addition of the oil. Now, oils and fats are one of the things that are on our no list of things that should not be canned so i did some research and consulted my friend cindy from the indian preservation you guys have heard me talk about her and her channel the indian preservation if you haven't checked her out i encourage you to do so she is a master food preserver and so i did consult with her she did some research i did some research and we have in fact found a at least one recipe that does include canning um, water bath canning with oil so even though these recipes give me pause i'm going to do some more research on that and see if i can get a clearer answer um, but other than those two recipes this book is great it's filled with a lot of great recipes the um, steps that they use are very solid the guidelines that they use are very solid so i do like this book it has a lot of great recipes in it like i said and um i think it's i think it's great the 
recipes that include adding oil. I'm still going to do some research on those. Like I said, Cindy and I did find a couple, I think there was at least two recipes that we did find that were from um, tested sources. And I don't remember which one I'll have to go back and check. Um, that do, I think it was from the USDA um, canning guideline book. And I will link that for you below. That's a free download if you want to download it. You can pay for a bound copy of it, but you can download it for free. Um, but I believe that that's where we found the recipes. But I will check on that to be sure. And I will do some more research. But those are the only two recipes that I found that were questionable and that had to do with the oil. All I would say about that is if, you, if you're going to add the oil... I think it should be recipes that are tested. I'm not sure that these recipes have been tested. So those are question marks in my mind, but the other recipes seem very solid and I think it's a nice canning book. I would not hesitate to recommend it to a new person. Okay, and then the next book, this is called The Homestead Canning Cookbook. Now this one you guys did not ask me about, but the author of this one is uh, Georgia Varosa. And she is the lady who wrote the Amish canning cookbook. I love this book, you guys. This book, I, I highly recommend if you are a new canner to get this book. This is very sound, very solid, great information. It's a great place to start with canning. Um, so that's why I purchased, I saw that she came out with another book and I had to get it to take a look at it. She is a certified master food preserver. So everything she has in here is tested, trusted. Um, there's no question marks whatsoever. The only thing I would say about this book is it's pretty much a repeat of this one. So if you have the Amish canning cookbook, you don't necessarily need this one. Most of the recipes are the same. She has thrown in a few new ones, um, but the majority of it is the same as the Amish Canning Cookbook. So um, it's up to you. If you don't have the Amish Canning Cookbook, I would get this one instead because she has a few more recipes. It's not a lot, but there are a few. Um, but it's in this one, she, the Amish Canning Cookbook doesn't have any pictures or anything. It's very basic, straightforward, but I love that it is spiral bound. This one, I wish it was spiral bound because I love that about the, Canish, the Amish Canning Cookbook, um, but she has fantastic pictures in this one. So it's a little upscale from the first book that she did from the Amish Canning Cookbook. She, she gives you lots and lots and lots of information. It's such a great place to start. If you're new, you will just learn so much from this book or from this one. So like I said, if you don't have this one, highly, highly, highly recommend this one. If you do have this one and you just want an updated copy, mine's pretty worn. Um, this is great. A couple new recipes, a couple few new recipes in it, plus all the ones from this one. So um, highly recommend the Homestead, Homestead Canning Cookbook. Anything by Georgia Varosa is going to be amazing. So, um, so those are my canning books. Then I have a couple of more that I bought just for fun, just for me. Um, this book is called, the, called Fermented Vegetables. And this was recommended by my friend Cindy. Um, I was asking her about sauerkraut. Now, I have never done any fermentation, so I am extremely new to it. And I explained to her that we get this delicious sauerkraut that has wine in it. And what do you know about making sauerkraut with wine? I would love to make my own. So, and then she hooked me up with this book and said to get this book. It has all the information in it, and it, it does include a recipe for making sauerkraut with wine. So. Um, I ordered the book and have gone through it and it just has so many amazing recipes in it. So you guys, we are going to be doing more than canning. We are going to be doing some fermenting and I'm so excited because like I said, this is totally new to me. Um, I've not done any fer um, fermenting at all. So these, this book, I'm very, very excited about learning new things and adding some new things to my channel. So speaking of sauerkraut, I have mine started and um, this is going to be uh, sauerkraut with white wine. Uh, we're on day three and I also wanted to mention that the other new thing that I'm trying is 
if you can see, there's a spring in there and a special lid. And these are from Ball and it's um, called the fermentation kit. Now you can get the whole kit, which includes your jar, the spring, the lid, and some canning salt and a recipe, I think. I have plenty of jars, I didn't need the jar. I have a ton of salt, I didn't need the salt. So I just bought the lids. And if you buy just the lids, you, there's two in a packet package, you get two lids, you get two springs. Um, so that is what I purchased. Um, to make my sauerkraut and I think the spring is an absolutely fabulous idea um, The lid is also special. It's supposed to let in just the right amount of air or let I Don't know. It's it's supposed to be made specifically for the fermentation process. I'm sorry I don't know how all of it works yet I'm still learning but there's something special about the lid that allows fermentation to happen the way that it's supposed to uh, Typically, if you don't have this, typically they recommend that you use uh, something to weight down whatever you're fermenting. In this case, it's cabbage. Um, they recommend that you just use a smaller jar uh, that's got water in it to weight down the cabbage so that it stays underneath your brine. Um, but with the spring, you don't have to do that. So this was a fabulous idea by Ball, I think. And I've got my little sauerkraut going here and I will keep you updated on that if that turns out really yummy I will be doing a video on it so I'm really excited about that but anyway there are a lot of other amazing recipes in this book I'll make sure to leave links to all these books in the description box for you below um, but we're gonna be doing some fermenting so I'm really excited about that um, opens up a whole new world to me and then speaking of new things something else new. Uh, for those of you who follow me on uh, social media, I did, and I, I can't remember if I put, um, I think I also talked about it here on YouTube on the community tab. I purchased a Next Caliber um, dehydrator and I'm so excited. I've waited a long time to purchase a dehydrator. So yes, many of you made the comment, that's the Cadillac of dehydrators. And it kind of is. It's not the professional line, but it's the nine the nine tray with um the clear door so it kind of, it was pretty pricey um but i am loving it and experimenting with some some of the recipes that came with it um, it comes with this dehydration guide this is what comes with it here's the actual dehydrator that's what it looks like except mine has the clear door on it um so it comes with this, but I got a special deal. And you, if you're in the market for a dehydrator, I highly recommend that you keep an eye on their website. Um, they had a bundle that included um, this book. This is the Complete Guide to Food Dehydration, and it has a ton of dehydrating, re dehydrating recipes in it, as well as obvious how-tos and how to use your dehydrator and all that but it's got some really great recipes in it and this came with it as part of the bundle if you purchase this separately i think it's like 30 dollars or something that's kind of pricey um and the other thing that came with my bundle were some of the pair i think they call them paraflex sheets they're the non-stick coated sheets that go on top of your trays so um i got a little bit of a deal by purchasing the bundle and they were offering 15 percent off so i got a deal on it i feel like and uh, saved a little bit of money but we're going to be doing some dehydrating too you guys so for those of you who are dehydrators or you like to ferment um leave me a comment in the comment section talking about the things that you like fermenting or things you like to dehydrate or things that you would like to try i always love getting feedback from you guys because that helps me put together things that i know that you're interested in learning about so if there's something specific that you want to ferment or dehydrate leave me a comment and if there's something that you love that to ferment or dehydrate leave a comment as well i know you guys love to read through the comments and see what other people are doing and that just helps us to connect and i love that so leave me a comment then one more book that i bought i don't know if any of the rest of you are interested in this or not but this kind of goes along with dehydrating i have started a pollinator garden um, just outside um, my kitchen um, we're trying to bring in pollinators 
there to help with our garden garden. Um, it's always nice to have a, what they call a pollinator garden. Plus I love to watch the hummingbirds and the bees and the butterflies do their thing. Um, but as I was re researching plants that are good to bring in your pollinators, many of those plants you can also use for making teas. So I purchased a book called Growing Your Own Tea Garden. So and this kind of goes along with dehydrating because several of the things that I've planted will be able to dehydrate and make teas out of. So I thought I would bring you guys along for that. Like I said, this is all kind of new to me, so it'll be new stuff. Um, I'm not going to be an expert, but as I will share with you what I learn as I go. But this is a great book, has a lot of great information in it. If you like to make herbal teas, I don't grow in a zone where I can grow actual tea. Um, that I think you have to be in zone nine or higher. So for those of you who are, you can grow that actual plant that black tea, white tea, oolong tea, all those are actually made out of. So mine's gonna be more of an herbal tea garden because I'm not in the right zone for that. Um, but if you are, you can grow your own black tea. I think that that's really exciting. So this book is very easy to understand. She outlines um, different re recipes. She talks about dehydrating your herbs or flowers um, to make tea, tells you how to store it, how to brew it. Uh, why you would want certain types of teas. She's got a sleepy time tea garden idea, fatigue fighting tea garden, tummy trouble tea garden, uh, immune boosting tea garden. So she gives you a lot of great ideas of things to grow together to improve your health or support your health. So it, this is a really good book. And there are a lot of books out there on tea gardens, um, but I picked this one. And I think it's really great. It was a great bang for my buck. I think tons and tons of information. So we will be, I'm gonna do some garden videos for you guys. You guys seem to show some interest in that. And I'll be sharing my little pollinator garden with you and we'll be doing some tea gardening as well and some dehydrating and we'll make some great herbal teas. So leave me a comment if you're interested in that and what your thoughts are on that. And then the other thing I've had going on in my kitchen, I have tried to make sourdough before. I know bread is all the rage right now. Everyone's into baking bread and I know some people have had a hard time finding yeast, unfortunately, and even flour. Um, so anyway, I decided to be a good time to try sourdough once again. I did try it before, struggled with it a little bit. Um, and honestly, I got tired of babysitting it, but I've done some research and found that you don't have to babysit it quite as much as I was and it can be a little less time consuming than what I was originally doing. So I started another starter and this time I used uh, a whole wheat flour. My friend Cindy said when you do a starter, the higher protein content of your flour, the easier it is to make a starter. So I used, I had some of the um, sprouted wheat flour that we used in making the um, Dave's Killer, the copycat version of Dave's Killer seed bread. I had some of that sprouted wheat flour left over. So I use that in my starter and look you guys, this is day three. Look at all those bubbles. <laughs> it's going crazy. So for those of you who have started, who have struggled with um, making sourdough starter, I highly recommend using a whole grain um, flour of some sort to start it because that has certainly made a huge difference for me. The first time I tried it, I just used all purpose flour and eventually it did start to do its thing, but it took forever and it was just, I don't know, I didn't enjoy the process. So anyway, this time I used a different flour to start my starter and boy, is it there a big difference. So if you're struggling with your starter, I highly recommend looking into using a whole grain flour to get it going because it certainly has made a difference for me. And I'll keep you updated on how my starter is going and we'll be making some sourdough items too. So I'm excited about that. Um, and yeah, I guess that's all of my new stuff that's been going on. Um, I know I'm kind of late putting out a video this week, but I've been kind of playing with my dehydrator and reading these books and sorting through some things and making sourdough, <laughs> sourdough starter. So I've had some other things going on. But last but not least, remember these guys, the pickled escabeche. 
Well, you guys wanted to know what it was like after it had set, and it's been a couple weeks since I made this, so I thought we would try it on camera and see how it tastes. Um, have it in the beautiful flute jars. These jars are by Ball. They're just so pretty. I love that, but it's been a couple weeks. You can tell we still have a lot of beautiful color to the carrots and the jalapeno peppers. So we're gonna open it up here and give it a taste. Always check your seal. For those of you who are new, you should be able to pick your jar up by the seal and that steel, the seal should stay. So let's pop it open. Hear that? All right. Let's see how spicy it is. I use quite a few jalapenos, but uh, like I shared with one person who was asking me about the heat level, jalapenos can vary greatly in how hot they are. Most jalapenos are pretty hot, but I have come across some that are not. So the best thing that I can tell you for this recipe is to actually taste one of the jalapenos you're using to see what the heat level on it is. Um, mine were not very spicy and they were kind of big. So what I have found is the bigger the jalapeno, usually the less spicy it is. That's just been my experience from ones we've grown and ones I've purchased at the grocery store. The bigger they are, they tend to have less heat. Um, but that's been my experience and that's why I used so many of them in this recipe. So let's see how we are on crispiness. The carrots still have a lot of nice firm texture to them. Mm. Oh wow, that is really good. Flavor explosion. And it's not too spicy. My jalapenos were not that hot. Let's try some cauliflower. It's still really, a carrot was really crunchy. And we used the pickle crisp, the calcium chloride to help with the crunch. The cauliflower is a little bit softer than the carrots, but it still has really nice crunch to it. Great, great flavor. And those are just gonna get better as they sit. Let's see if I can find an onion. Mm. The onion has great crunch too. All right, I'm gonna regret this, I'm sure. But I'm gonna try a jalapeno. I'm not big on super hot food. I like a little bit of heat, but I like to be able to hold on to my taste buds. I don't like anything that burns my taste buds off. But like I said, these don't, these were not all that spicy. So I'm gonna bite the bullet and try it. Mm. Just great pickled flavor, you guys. And the jalapeno isn't hot. It has a little bit of heat to it, but it is not what I would classify as hot at all. And I'm sensitive to hot things. And this is gonna be even better once you refrigerate it. I think once it sits in the refrigerator, it will help your vegetables crisp up just a little bit. But that is amazing. The um, spices we used were fantastic. They still have some crunch from the calcium chloride and from um, soaking them in the salt water bath we did in the beginning i think that really helped with the crunch just delicious be perfect for you could chop that up and put it in a salad it'd be great with any latin or mexican dishes great for taco night you could chop that up and put that on top of a taco or have it on the side as a salad it's delicious so i hope you'll give it a try i will leave a link to that recipe in the description box below i'll try to leave you an icard too sometimes the icard thing doesn't work so i apologize for that and for those of you who watch on TV, you never see the iCard. So always refer to the uh, description box. I'll have all the information in there for you. So I hope you enjoyed coming along with me today, guys. I hope my review was um, helpful to you. Uh, and again, these are just my opinions. It's just how I feel about things. And honestly, I'm not trying to put anybody down just because I don't necessarily care for their canning book. Um, I don't want to cut anyone down. That's not my intent, but it's just my honest opinion. Anytime I'm asked, I will always be honest with you. So 
I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you look forward to some more fun and different things that we're gonna have com coming along on my channel. And we're not gonna stop canning. I still have plenty of canning coming up for you guys. And I'm so excited that it the weather's finally starting to straighten up a little bit. And we are going to do some fun things when the garden starts coming on. I'll share some of those videos with you. And yeah, we're gonna be having some fun this summer. So take care and I will see you next time. Have a great day.